Welcome to Instancing with Tops. Using Tops for instancing is helpful when working with hundreds of thousands of instances. So let's take a look and see how we can get started. To begin, let's open up the OpCreate dialog and add a point file in top to our network. The point file in top allows us to load point file data directly to the GPU, which is helpful in a lot of circumstances. There are a few things we should pay close attention to here when we're working with a point file in top. First is that by default, our point file in displays a normalized split for the contents of our point file. Here we can see that by default, our red channel contains X data, our green channel contains Y, and our blue channel contains Z information. Our alpha channel contains active data. And in this case, active is used to represent the true false condition for whether or not a point exists in memory. Our point files need to fit inside of a square texture, and so there is a non-zero chance that we'll end up with pixels that fit inside of our square texture but don't contain any point file information. In this case, that would be an active value of zero. This is really helpful when we're working with instances, and we'll see this at play when we start to connect this to our geometry component. Let's start to set up that workflow. We can connect our point file into a null top, here by default, we can see this represented as color. It's difficult to understand how this color re relates to spatial information. So to see that, we can turn on the viewer active flag for our null top, right click inside of the viewer and select view as points. If we use the H key to home our viewer, we have a better view of what's happening with our points. Let's go ahead and set up our instancing workflow. We can begin by using an add SOP. We'll connect to the add SOP, a convert SOP. The convert SOP will let us convert our point here from our add SOP. We'll turn on add points. Our point at zero, zero, we'll then convert here with our convert top, and we'll use the convert to particles per point. Next, we'll connect this to a geometry component. And in our geometry component, let's go ahead and turn on instancing. On the instance page, we can turn on the instancing parameter, and we can then use our null top to represent the translate information for our instances. Let's then associate the correct channels here. Our active data comes from the alpha channel. Our translate X comes from the red channel. Our translate Y comes from G and our translate Z comes from B. Now it's difficult to see our points here, so let's use a material to better visualize our instances. We can open up the OpCreate dialog, head over to the materials page and grab a line material. With the line material added to our network, let's drag and drop that on top of our geometry component. Apply that as our material. On our line material, let's head to the line page, turn off draw lines, and on the point page, turn on draw points. Here, let's make sure our near and far color are the same. I'm going to change my near point color to be bright white, and the same for, my, for our far point color. This will make it a little easier to view our points. We can also turn up the point size multiplier so they're a little larger inside of our geometry component. Let's make our geometry component pure active with the A key and then home our view with the H key so we can better see these points laid out in 3D space. This is a great way to get started, but I'd actually like to look at some other data. Let's zoom out in our network, head back to the point file in and work with a different file. In my point file in top, I'm gonna to select the files browser from the file browser, I'm going to select the banana.ply file and then open it. Here we need to again associate what information will go into the red, green, and blue channels. For the red channel, I'm going to select X, green will be Y, and blue will be Z. Here already we can see that we have our instances taking the shape of our banana PLY. Now it looks our point like our point file is slightly too large, our point size is too large, so let's turn that down just a little bit. That looks a little bit better. Now there's more information inside of our point file than we can contain in just four channels of data. And in fact, if we head back to the point file in top and we use the dropdown for one of our parameters, we'll see that we have much more additional information in here that we might want to use. Let's go ahead and use the point file select. The point file select top will let us extract some of those additional elements from our point file. We can drag and drop the point file on top of our point file select 
and then select which information we'd like to pack into these channels. I'm going to go ahead and grab the red, green, blue, and alpha values that are in our point file. And here we can see in the normalized split view that these are in a range of 0 to 255. Let's use a math top to correctly rearrange these values. With a math top connected to our point file in select top, we can head to the range page. And here in the from range from 0 to 255, we'll rearrange those values to be instead 0 to 1. Let's connect a null to our math top. We can use the shortcut Alt-N to automatically add a null to our component. On the geometry component, let's head back to the Instance 2 page this time. And at the bottom, we'll see there is a parameter for our color operator. We can drag and drop the color op that we want to use here. In this case, the null to top was, is the operator that holds our color information. And then we can associate the correct channels, R, G, B, and A, that hold our corresponding color information. When we get closer to our operator, we'll see that in fact this looks much better. And now we can see the color data that's packed into our point file on top. Let's take a look at another operator. Let's use again our point file on top to add a point file, some point files into our network. Here we'll connect this to a null top. And this time, instead of using a point for our instances, let's instead use a circle sop. With our circle stop added to the network, let's go ahead and turn down its radius. On our circle stop, let's turn the radius down to 0 0.06 for both x and y. We can connect this to a geometry component. We can right click on the output of our circle, select a geometry component, add it to our network. We can then come back to our null 3. And we'll use that on the instance page by turning instancing on for our geometry component. We'll use our null three to be our translate op. Here we'll use the A channel for the or the alpha channel that holds our active information, our R, G, and B channels, which hold our position data for our instances. And as we zoom out here, it looks to be that we have a set of instances that are looking pretty nice. Now there is one problem. I notice here that all of our instances are facing the same direction. And in fact, there's another parameter that we might use on our geometry component to help with this. The first thing we need to do is extract the information we want to use for our rotation. On the instance two page, we have a parameter for rotate to op. We can rotate to a vector when we're using our instances. This allows us to use the, a normal vector to describe the rotation that we'll use for our instance. Let's use a point file select top in our network. Let's then drag and drop the point file, the point file two top onto the point file select two top. And in our red, green, and blue channels, let's select the NX or normal X, NY, normal Y, and NZ, normal Z data that's associated with our points. Let's connect this to a null top. This null top now represents our rotate to normals. Back on our geometry two component, let's head to the instance two page and use null four to be our rotate to op. We can get a little closer to our geometry so we can see this at play. Our rotate to vector X will be from the R channel, Y will be in G, and B will be in Z. Z will be in B. We can now see that our instances are correctly aligned so that they fall on the surface of what looks like a sphere. There are lots of ways that we can use instances to be driven by texture operators, and this is just a beginning set of examples for how we can think about making that work.